From this presentation onwards, we will understand different types of functions in asymptotic notations. In this lecture, we will discuss decrement functions, which is the first type that we are going to discuss. Let's get started and let's see what are the topics. In this lecture, we will understand decrement functions. We will properly understand decrement functions through examples. And finally, I will propose one problem based on decrement functions. So, let's get started and let's try to understand what are decrement functions. Here comes the definition of a decrement function. A function in which the denominator is bigger than the numerator is called a decrement function. So, a decrement function is a function whose denominator is larger than the numerator. Here are some examples of decrement functions. c by n is a decrement function because n is bigger than c. I am assuming that c is some constant and n represents the size of the input. As the size of the input increases and as it approaches to infinity, the constant has no relevance. It is almost negligible. Therefore, n is greater than the constant. So, c over n is the decrement function. What about n over n square? n over n square is also the decrement function because n square is greater than n. What about n over 2 to the power n? This is also the decrement function because 2 to the power n is greater than n. What about n square over 3 to the power n? 3 to the power n is greater than n square. Therefore, this is also the decrement function. 3 to the power n represents exponential increase, while n square is polynomial increase. And exponential increase is greater than polynomial increase. So, clearly this is also the decrement function. And so on. There are many decrement functions and these are some of the decrement functions. Now, let's visualize a decrement function through the graph. This is the graphical representation of a decrement function. As the size of the input increases, a decrement function decreases and it approaches to zero. So, a decrement function is a function which decreases. This is the reason why these functions are called decrement functions. Because a decrement function is a function which decreases as the size of the input increases. So, with this we understood what are decrement functions. Now, let's solve one problem based on decrement functions. Here is the problem. Arrange the following functions in the order of decrease from slowest to fastest. These are the functions and we need to arrange these functions in the order of decrease from slowest to fastest. This means we need to arrange these functions starting from the slowest decrement function and ending at the fastest decrement function. How do we do this? I want you to try this problem on your own first and then we will try to solve this problem together. So, you will see my solution later but first I want you to solve this problem. So, pause the video and try solving this problem. I hope you are done. Now, let's dive into my solution. I have divided the solution into three steps. This will help you understand how to solve these type of problems properly. Here comes step number one. Step number one is to simplify the fractions. 100 by n cannot be simplified further as there are no common terms in the numerator and the denominator. Therefore, we can write 100 by n as it is. What about n by 2 to the power n? This also cannot be simplified further. Therefore, we can write it as it is. What about n by n square? n by n square can be simplified further as n is common in both numerator and denominator. We can cancel n from the numerator and 1n from the denominator. We will left with 1 in the numerator and n in the denominator. So, n by n square is equal to 1 by n. This is the simplified form of n by n square. 
What about n square by 3 to the power n? This can be written as it is. What about n cube by 3 to the power n? This can also be written as it is. So, this is the result obtained after simplifying the fractions. We have just simplified one fraction as this is what we can do. Now, let's move to step number 2. According to step number 2, we now need to compare the denominators of the functions we obtained from step number 1 and we need to arrange the functions accordingly. Here are the functions we obtained from the step number 1 and now we need to compare the denominators of these functions and arrange these functions accordingly. We need to arrange these functions in the order of decrease from slowest to fastest. And if we just compare the denominators, what do you think which function is the slowest and which one is the fastest? The function which has the least denominator is the slowest and the function which has the greatest denominator is the fastest. As the denominator increases, the decrement function decreases with the faster rate. And as the denominator decreases, the decrement function decreases with the slower rate. This makes sense. Out of n, 2 to the power n and 3 to the power n, we can say that n is the smallest and 3 to the power n is the largest. We can say this that n is less than 2 to the power n and 2 to the power n is less than 3 to the power n. Therefore, we can place 100 by n and 1 by n first then n by 2 to the power n and then n square by 3 to the power n and n cube by 3 to the power n. So, this is the order we will get after arranging these items. We have 100 by n first, then 1 by n, then n by 2 to the power n, then n square by 3 to the power n and finally n cube by 3 to the power n. So, this is the arrangement so obtained. So, we are done with step number 2. Now, I want you to compare these two functions. We can observe that denominators of these two functions are same, but numerators are not same. It might be possible that 1 by n is less than 100 by n. Is it true? Let's try to find this in step number 3. So, step number 3 is to compare the numerators of the decrement functions obtained in the last step and do the final arrangement. So, these are the functions we obtained from the last step and now we need to compare the functions with same denominators. We need to compare 100 by n and 1 by n and then we need to compare n square by 3 to the power n and n cube by 3 to the power n. Now, let's compare 100 by n and 1 by n. 100 is greater than 1 and so this function has the slowest decrement. Why is that the case? In order to understand this, let's take n as 2. If n is 2, then 100 by 2 is 50. What about this function? 1 by 2 is 0.5. This is much closer to 0 compared to 100 by 2, which is 50. If we take more n values, we will observe that this function decreases with much faster rate compared to this function. So, clearly this function must come before this function in the ordering. And already 100 by n is before 1 by n, so this order is correct. What about n square by 3 to the power n and n cube by 3 to the power n? We can observe these two denominators are same but numerators are not same. We just learned that greater the numerator, the slowest will be the decrease. If we compare these two numerators, n square is less than n cube. Therefore, n square by 3 to the power n has greater decrease compared to n cube by 3 to the power n. Therefore, it must be placed at the end. Hence, we need to arrange these two functions. We need to place n cube by 3 to the power n before n square by 3 to the power n. After the arrangement, we will get this as the result. Now, this ordering is absolutely correct. 100 by n has the slowest decrease, 
and n square by 3 to the power n has the fastest decrease. And this ordering is from the slowest decrement function to the fastest decrement function. So with this, we are done with this problem. We learned how to arrange decrement functions in the order of decrease from slowest to fastest. So I hope the concept of decrement functions is clear. So with this, we are done with this topic. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.